I, you know what happened was I was moving my phone because my cat was about to step on him, and it dialed <laughs> your phone. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I was like, what's that noise? <laughs> kitty, that was a kitty call. Sorry about that. Kitty. Oh, that's cute. That's you know, cute. They, they love it when I'm on the radio, and they like to come and get right in my face. Like, hey, yeah. Hey, that's hey. exactly cute. Yeah. I had to put my kitty in the other room. It finally it start, stopped meowing. But, you know, the new age How apparently started. Doing? Great. It's getting bigger with longer spikes. It grabs hold of me with oh, its spikes and climbs up picture. my arm. Yeah, oh, y'all have to do that. Yeah, it no. bigger one. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to set tell it no because it's no. learning it. No, I'm not a tree, kitty. I'm not a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ow. let's look at how we were during the New Age movement. I'm going to look at New Age on Britannica. It says uh, New Age movement because a lot of the kids talk about love and light in you know, the new age and well, offered. They weren't using that word. They weren't using that word back in the 70s. No, they used and esoteric and well, I'll occult. I'll tell you when it began. i tell you when, they, it's that when it began. Freemasonry, Rosicrucian. <laughs> the, the new age, the new age movement began with hair. And they said, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And oh, yeah. Sasha uh-huh. Kirk's wife was part of the producers of uh, of um, hair in Los Angeles, so oh. that, so that's uh-huh. the connection. They were involved with the New Age movement, and that was what the New well, Age movement was. But well, it changed so it. rapidly in the Western world in the '70s. So it started really growing in the '70s. Let me look at a looking at Wikipedia. When Metaphysical community '70s and um, '80s forward the New Age. Yeah, it, it says was, the New Age of Love and Light. It started 70s and, and 80s movement, but Wikipedia says Let's something talk different. At the same time as each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Wikipedia says something different. Like in 70 to 2000. All right, I'm on Wikipedia, which we know is just a new encyclopedia. Anyway, um, do we want to discuss so that? Agree that or disagree? Began. No. I I think we should stay where we are because um, we're running out of time and you're going to be continuing. I have a conflict. I have to, I have to contact uh, Suzanne and uh, renegotiate talking with her or something. So I'm going to do that while you, while we're chatting here. Um, yeah, and I have so, at 9 o'clock. So. And so, yeah, so we were, we didn't know. Um, are you expecting other people to come on to the show, CJ? Yeah, we, Rich. We were at the normal time from Chudu. Uh, about 30 minutes. You, We've got 30 me, minutes me. left. Rich Rich, and Suzanne are coming on tonight. They were going to do their Love and Light part the last hour, I guess. And uh, she works till she 7, and she's sense. coming on 8 to 9. You have to schedule she on her uh, appointments. She, she told me she had talked to well, you she today. but me said she, that she, was she has to do it after seven, the show so tonight. There's a conflict here. Yeah, because okay, she, she's doing the show. Okay. Yeah, eight to ten. She's her and her husband are doing tonight, and uh, uh, supposed to come and talk. Because I had James Tolley, but you told me to move him, so I did. So uh, you wanted right. to talk with yeah, Karen, you and to, so I had Suzanne and them come on the second hour. And I thought. Uh, okay, so let's. Go, let's go I thought back Karen to wanted to do Love and Light. Let's go back to topic. We are doing Love and Light. We're doing New Age. Well, that's New Age consciousness movement. And spirituality. So how, when you contacted with extraterrestrials, TJ and Karen and me, our contact was not these dark forces. You know how the, the modern UFO movement is like, they're all demons. But my contact has been very positive, even with uh, reptilians. And you apparently... Teresa never met reptilians. Karen and I have. No. So, so your first contact, we've gone into that. Now, when you were with your first husband, and he's working at NASA, did you have any contact with extraterrestrials that he was aware of? Did you have no, I never told him anything. Nothing. No, because 
uh, Janet, his father worked for Grumman, and he worked for NASA. And other than they believed in him, but they weren't allowed to talk about him. But he was in the room when they had aliens go over. So it was bogeys, 12 o'clock high or 2 o'clock or whatever that story was. So I wrote about that. But the one time I had a light beam come out of an orb come and knock on my door, that's the one I told you about. But he didn't know about that. That's when you and I were listening to Catherine Kuhlman on you know TV and stuff, and she was real spiritual. But I, that's all I can remember about spiritual. And then that man came and knocked on my door, and that's when uh, – you know, mm-hmm. I I was uh, I, about the time before I had Lauren, when I had her, uh, cr- she was created when men walked on the moon, because ta- Steve was working a lot at NASA at night, but she was born uh, April 3rd, 1970. So you see, I was pregnant during that mm-hmm. 69, last part of 69. But a man came to what? visit me. I was seeing... Uh, Bernard uh, Rosenbaum, who worked for TRW, Crisis Street, him and Kathy Rosenbaum had two boys, Matthew and Timothy, and they wanted a little girl really bad, but uh, they lived right there in front of me, and he worked for TRW and drove a blue Thunderbird. And uh, I had a man come up in a gold, uh, well, man knocked on my door, and he said, I want to have a baby with you. And then when I I didn't mm-hmm. understand what was going on, and he, I followed him out the door, and he disappeared in a gold or like the bright sun. It was almost like another dimension, but I call it an orb because uh, it blinded me. So I don't have know how to explain that because I don't know if there's any words for that, if you know what I mean. But but. Uh, uh, he came back later because I was really worried because I'd had like a uh, like a placenta preview or something. I had a blood clot where I looked like I lost a baby. But he came back by to say the baby mm-hmm. was okay. So I always considered I must have had a – I don't know if this is true or not, but it goes with that John Mack abduction stuff or something. I never felt I was abducted because yeah. I was conscious. But the way I describe it is right. a man so came and knocked on my saying, door. He came back and took it, the baby back. He took, no, he said, the baby. he said, he said, uh, I was, I was worried at two and a half or three months, but here's the way I, I put it in my mind. Now this is now, not then. Then I wasn't, I was just a teenager, you know, in between Angie and Lauren. So you know how the way we talk about, uh, well, like I was the, uh, I relate to uh, Taken, you know, Allie Clark, the little the little mm-hmm. girl, Allie Clark, and Steven right. Spielberg did that mm-hmm. story. I related to that mm-hmm. because when I was little, you know, I, I uh, had so many operations, so I went under with anesthesia, and then I died in the second grade. So I thought this was part of my extraterrestrial initiation because at four, you know, I went up on a spacecraft and wanted to – didn't want to come back down. So that was conscious. I wasn't abducted. I consciously fell asleep and, you know, this I could see myself on the ground. So that was my first out of body experience. But at that age, I had some ET visiting me and teaching me things, and mother couldn't see them at four. Remember that story where I told you I consciously knew mother couldn't right. see my yes, invisible that. being? So mm-hmm. we have that. So I thought it was part of that group extraterrestrials because I seem to always have been conscious of extraterrestrials in my life, but we're not supposed to talk about it, especially around NASA people. So that goes back uh-huh. to the boyfriend thing, right? Because right? you're not allowed. Well, that doesn't mean yeah. it didn't happen. It just means we didn't talk about it. <laughs> well, I also think, i to add something. Uh, I also think that a lot of us have more going on than what we even know, and uh, they're continually wiping it away. I wonder if that's true because I had right. what a lot of times missing time, but I was conscious, but I'd be conscious of – I still remember one time at the townhouse, I was with uh, one uh, guy standing in the window. I'm not going to mention names, but he was a husband, okay, but I've had several folks. So, But uh, I we were missing <laughs> like an hour and a half or two, and then when we uh, – I wanted to get out of there in pictures, it was like uh, – uh, 
where you knock things off the wall. It's the energy. My husband said I did it. He said I had uh, telekinesis or something, especially if I got mad. But when we walked out, I knew I didn't make the merry-go-round spin, and there was nobody there. We went by the dark playground where we were living, townhouses, but they'd have – you know, places for the kids. And uh, the kids weren't with me at the time. They were with Steve in, uh, up in Peoria, Illinois, or somewhere. But uh, it spun around. But you know how you start learning about the extraterrestrials, your family off planet, those on the planet, and then the times that come and go interdimensionally. So I have these orb people that uh, saved me in the second grade in orbs, and so I related it to orb people in the Wizard of Oz. So I come up with this whole other reality, whether it's true or not, interdimensional beings that can come and go like Glinda did with Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so I don't know how to explain it. But let me let me say one thing. I think, you know, if, if we – my opinion on this is if we think it, it's there. So I think that's true. I think if we if it wasn't true, we wouldn't be thinking it because huh. we live on so – and have interaction with multidimensional – uh, parts of ourselves all the time I think they're with us right this minute And for all we know We could be on a ship And watching ourselves take the test Down here in this earth 3D consciousness I'm not saying it's so But it's who knows Well that sort of goes with the multi-world theory Right and then the multi-dimensions And now well, in quantum physics we're, trying, we're finally getting there We know that uh, some of the universes spin backwards, so we're just getting into that. But they used to not talk yeah. about that even two or three years ago. We knew planets, some of them spin backwards. Mm -hmm. But now, if you listen to the uh, World Science Festival with that Brian Green, I think it was oh, yeah. Brian Green, uh -huh. they're just now yeah, starting to talk about the theories. They can't prove them, but they've known, like NASA, uh -huh. Hubble, you know, all the – that they right. now the universe right. is spinning, so they're going to work on that, working on right. how to talk about it. So that, that's that's why I like to use the word metaphysics instead of new age. I think if you use the word new age, I think it makes a lot of people. Of course, the, the age of Aquarius is beautiful, but I mean, as far as just the words new age, it touches on a lot of religionists, and they get oh, scared yeah. and judgmental. And so, if you talk about physics and metaphysics where we live. You know, if there is a science in this, too. But I get the feeling a lot of times when I'm with you guys that we are uh, we have a lot of friendly beings that are watching us do this and who knows what it is. And I think we're multidimensionalizing this very thing at this moment because you have a lot of uh, charisma energy, TJ. It's beautiful energy field. And when you come in, there it's like somebody comes in with you that we can't feel. That's what I feel. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you. I like your energy, too. And Janet, what? Thank you. I have a question. A couple of weeks ago, we had um, a person on our show that was talking about the moon um, landing didn't happen, right? You know, one of those huh. Never moved in. It, uh -huh. it went on my show. By Sandy Kubrick. No, I had one. So you were saying uh, previously that you were in there in the control room when they they were reporting about uh, ETs following them, right? You said something about that. Oh, you know, yeah. You if you something about the ETs. Oh, yeah. So I'm not happened, but. How to this man that, that, you, that the moonwalk was real? Because you know, he's listening to the, he's listening he's listening to conspiracy theories, and that was based on Kubrick being in hype, and he wanted to sell the story. You got to go listen to all the stories and the people that lived during the time versus the people that only believe hearsay. So what he did is he's following that story that they made some film. Uh, in case of emergency, and uh, the guy uh, spun it a different way so he could make some money, and he did. He's sort, sort of like one of those Philip K. Dick dudes that has uh, – but, no, I know that story, yeah. uh, and, and I listened, to, and I saw the film, and I you know, I do a mini investigation and research on everything. I'm open to all sides, but, you know, each person – you can't – each person is going to believe what they want to believe, but – you got to remember, I did this for a living as an oh, investigator yeah, they, they and forensic. 
They can, no, they can right. take their theory. So he was saying that film cannot uh, survive its space. Film cannot survive on.